Safety Man Security Consulting, safetyman.co. You can subscribe to this on Be Ready with Safety Man on YouTube, safetyman.co. 609-975-9275 for any of your safety needs. Today we're going to talk about civilian stun gun use. This is a stun gun flashlight combination. In October of 2017, the New Jersey Attorney General and the Philadelphia City Council made stun guns and tasers legal for civilians to use for self-defense, for protection at home, and for a concealed carry out onto the street. Today we're going to talk specifically about stun guns. This is a stun gun flashlight combination. It uses electricity to cause localized pain compliance. It does not cause somebody to pass out and lose consciousness like you see on TV. That is only Hollywood. There is no device that does that. What this does is introduce a small amount of electricity into the muscles wherever you touch the person with this and creates pain. This is a stun gun and a flashlight combo. So here's the flashlight version. Okay, it's a very bright, bright LED flashlight. It is rechargeable and a standard AC outlet. On the very back of it, there is a tiny on off switch that we would only turn off while we're charging it or if there's small children around. We would put this up a way that they can't get it and we would turn this off. But all other times when you're carrying it for self-defense in your purse, in your pocket, in your glove box or next to your bed for self-defense at night, you would keep it in the on position. There is a three position switch on this flashlight, okay? In the bottom, it is off. In the midsection, that is our flashlight. All the way at the top, it then turns the flashlight off and <laughs> arms the stun gun feature. There's a little tiny button right above this. So the three position switch, off, nothing happens. Middle, just the flashlight. All the way to the top, no flashlight, just stun gun. So the way you would train to use this under stress is you would take your thumb, push it all the way to the top and hit the stun gun. Under stress, you would push this all the way to the top and hit the stun gun. What you would do with this stun gun when you hit somebody with it is you would jam it into somebody wherever they were trying to hold you or assault you. If you hit him in the face, in the throat, in the groin, in the arms, in the stomach, in the chest, that's all good. You're going to jam it in and try to drive them away from you, create localized pain, and then get away from the situation. How do I know that the stun gun is working if I apply it to somebody? The first thing would be a change in their behavior. If they're in a fighting stance and they're grabbing, kicking, punching, trying to hurt you, a change in behavior would be them now becoming defensive, reacting to the pain or the shock of the stun gun. So change in behavior is the first thing. The second would be that all the noise this is making would be quieter when you're actually touching somebody with it. So you would not hear the loud arcing of it. You would only hear the person hopefully making noises about the pain. So understand that silence would be golden in that situation. So then what you want to understand is the legality of using one of these stun guns to defend yourself, whether it be in your home or on the street. Again, you would have to be able to articulate that the force you are using, this type of force, is reasonable under the situation. Reasonable means that if you were in fear of pain or in fear of being assaulted, in fear of being kidnapped, if you are in physical fear of pain, you can then utilize a stun gun or a taser to defend yourself. You cannot start a fight and then, because you're losing, then introduce this. You can't accelerate a situation or escalate a situation and then use this. What else you want to understand is what are the implications of potential injury to somebody? Well, number one is there's not much unless they pass out and fall down and hit their head if you create a lot of pain in the throat, neck, or face area. The other potential implication of danger would be if someone has pre-existing medical conditions. But again, if they are assaulting you, that's not something that you generally have to be concerned about. Your goal is to utilize this for safety to get away so you can get to help. So again, remember the three position switch, all the way up to do your stun gun.
Now, we also like to talk about de-escalation. De-escalation is something that we want to talk about because we want to avoid a situation. We want to avoid a situation. If we see a situation is starting to get tense, if an argument is getting out of control, if someone who you are afraid of is approaching you, if you're in a domestic violence situation and you feel violence is imminent, we want to try to leave the situation. Call 911. Get help. Let your neighbors know. If we can't physically get away from the situation, then maybe we want to have our stun gun, taser, or whatever weapon that we have available, and we want to then say, hey, stay back. I have a taser. Stay back. I have a stun gun. And arc it like that to create fear and then try to get away. We want to de-escalate the situation. So the first, we want to de-escalate with our words, de-escalate by not being there when the situation happens, and de-escalate by maybe showing or sparking your weapon system. Additionally, what responsibilities do you have as a human being and as a citizen if we use this? Number one, we want to get away and immediately contact 911, report the assault or attempted assault, and then report that there may be an injured person at the location that this happened. That is your responsibility. Number one, you want to get to safety. Number two, you want to contact 911, report the assault to police, and report the fact that this device was used and there may be an injured person. That can help protect you legally. If you have any other questions, you can always go to safetyman.co. You can email me at corey, C-O-R-E-Y, at safetyman.co, or you can call me, 609-975-9275, and I'll answer any one of your questions. You can also go to Be Ready with Safety Man Podcasts on Apple or any place podcasts are, and I talk about de-escalation, stun guns, tasers, and different ways for you to stay safe in this world. So again, let me just go over this one more time. There's a three-position switch. When it's in the bottom, nothing is happening. When it's in the middle, the flashlight is on. When it's at the top, the flashlight goes off and it arms the stun gun. If you have any questions, safetyman.co, 609-975-9275. Please stay safe, de-escalate, and train, train, train to keep yourself safe.